YouTube! Back at it again with the IRL TCG vlog series. Each week, we will be playing Master Duel in real life, ideally trying to play a new deck and mix things up, depending on what my friends are willing to let me borrow and misplay into the ground. Back in the olden days, we had to actually meet up in person and socialize with other human beings in order to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Anti-spell is in the standby phase, not the main phase. In this series, I'm going to be giving you my full breakdown, recap of the gameplay, and pack opening of my loot. Let's jump in to this week's segment. YouTube! This week, we're taking all faithful back into the arena. We are playing Burn the Abyss. Once again, 10 years later. This year is the 10-year anniversary, actually. Here's the list here on screen. Sorry, I, I had to give back a lot of cards. Why don't you want Burning Abyss for? I do, actually. It's just like rollbacks and random staples that I didn't have, so uh, apologies. Uh, this is the deck list here, and uh, we'll see how uh, how it goes, although I kind of just spoiled that I've already recorded this like weeks ago. Yeah, okay, so this is the profile. I won't spoil how it goes, uh, but here are the ratios. We're playing three of all the good ones, uh, Tour Tour Guide, and then one Libich, and newly included because of Maze of Millennia, the brand new transaction rollback opens up so many cool plays with this in any trap deck, but especially Burning Abyss because Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss can be sent to the graveyard with Kagna, a uh, trap card that simply reads tribute to Burning Abyss monsters to pop three cards on the field. Because of the way transaction rollback works, you get to destroy three cards your opponent controls even if you don't control the monsters. It's it's not necessary because the activation requirement isn't required. Uh, so absolutely ridiculous interaction that you can do in Burning Abyss now uh, with transaction rollback in Fire Lake. And I think this is probably going to be the standard list for Burning Abyss going for standard list. Uh, but yeah, I think it's really good. Um, obviously, some changes can be made with things like the Ice Dragon, the Discard Traps, the Fiend Griefing. The traps can all be changed. And this was pre-Snake Eyes. So that's obviously going to be a huge part of the meta change uh, for the deck list going forward with, with regards to the trap cards. But I think Rollback and Fire Lake is such an incredibly cool interaction that I think it's super important. Tour Guide, I think, is going to be even weaker now going forward. So I might maybe cut her down to one because everyone's on like 15, 20 hand traps, literally. Although it does bait and setting four after that is maybe sometimes fine. We'll see. But I kind of just like playing one for that reason. We got three backjack, of course, really good cards. We've got three, uh, six discard traps. Backjack just being able to stack your deck or just mill a rollback or anything that you need is obviously extremely important. And then this extra deck is pretty standard. I don't think there's anything super crazy I'm missing here. There's a world where you can play double down or double Zeus. Sky Crisis is like a semi new card that I've included here, which is kind of important. I did want to include a link one as well, specifically Anima, just so I can trigger the um, trigger the backjack. People don't usually play into the zones, but sometimes they do, and it's probably more usable than Link Karibo in this deck for that reason. Uh, but yeah, double down or double Zeus could be worth it. Maybe you don't play Purple Dante, honestly, because it's like, yeah, like, I don't know, it's not that good even if it does get uh, onto the field. Other than that, the deck list uh, will perform, well, you'll see how it performs. Um, but yeah, of course, Transaction Rollback Fire Lake is kind of like the heart and soul of the win condition of what this deck is trying to do. Let's jump into the duels and see if this plays out well. Yo, 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 welcome everyone. Let's begin with round one, game one here. It's time to bring Old Faithful back onto the radar, especially with Rollback being an amazing new tool for this deck. Let's jump in and get started off here. We're going strong with a set four and pass in 2024. What an incredible Burning Abyss opening here. Now, I'm not going to have the hand cam this time. I literally just forgot to take my secondary camera for this episode, so apologies. But it should be a little bit uh, easier to see, and I don't think there's any glare in any of these, so the actual main camera is going to be nice and beautiful. Uh, looks like we've got a Horus deck here first up, and uh, that's going to be an Amseti uh, for Gold Sark, uh, King Sark, off the, off the bat here. He discards with King Sarcophagus and actually gets a Phantom Knight Cloak in the graveyard. I wish I was playing PK Fire like it was 2016, man. Oh, gone are the days. Anyway, uh, so this is the Soul Charge for free deck, where he just gets to flood the field with three level uh, level 8 monsters, and uh, boom! Uh, we hit him with a 2004 GOAT format staple jump scare. Torrential for three, gets flipped, and it's cool for me because I get to set up Tour Guide with my set Skarm. Ah! Judge! Yeah, so King Sarcophagus has a destruction protection effect. Uh, I misread it as it, pr it protects targeted destruction, not non-targeting the structure. I got it the wrong way around, so um, that was an oopsie. We both missed this here. He gets a search off of his uh, Ancient Cloak and then passes turn while I get my Tour Guide from the Underworld, which is hit with an Ash Blossom. And now I do probably one of the most desperate plays that exists in Burning Abyss. I flip Ice Dragon's Prison, stealing the Ash Blossom from the graveyard and then overlay the Tour Guide to make Dante. This is what I like to call a DIY Dante. 
This deck is so bad, but I love it and I'll play it forever, baby. So I'm in a Seer here, but I decide to not bring back the Skarm because what I want to do is set up Beatrice Masquerina, which you can't do in this deck unless specifically Seer only can bring back Dante for the turn. And so I end up going for Fiend Griefing on his Horus Monster in the graveyard just to trigger Graf so that I can hit for some damage and on SP Beatrice and the SP banishes the King Sarcophagus. Random ruling highlight here. Some of you might not know this, but you can actually do this play because watching this back, I was kind of confused because SP says you can't attack the turn that you use the effect, but it, it, it applies after it is using the effect. So if you use it in main phase two, then it doesn't matter if, if you've attacked. It's really weirdly worded. But anyway, we go to his turn here where he goes for Rite of Aramacer. And then on the Fateful Adventure, uh, I chain SP Little Knight to banish the token, which takes away all of the power from a Wandering Griffin Summon or a Draco back. Now he proceeds to activate a new King Sarcophagus, and he just gets to bring back all the monsters from the graveyard now. And we finally get to do the cool play, the play I've been waiting all year for, baby. Fiend Griefing put back Ash Blossom. I send Kagna to the graveyard, which then sends Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. Now I can go Beatrice, pay half my life points after sending the transaction rollback to copy the Fire Lake. And because of how this ruling works, you don't need to send two Burning Abyss monsters for the card's activation, and you get the full effect of destroying all three cards on the field like it's 2015 again, baby. Well, anyway, I'm not exactly winning here because he just gets to, uh, you know, summon Wandering Griffin. Talons take Beatrice and then slaps a Typhon on top of her. How fucking rude that you would desecrate my queen like that. Play goes back to me and I have to do the worst play imaginable. I, I feel like every turn I have the worst play imaginable. It's weird because that's how Burning Abyss is. So I'm playing these stupid racist archetype phobic idiots. I'm about to get racist. That all blow themselves up if anything that looks remotely different to them is on the field. Why the BA die? That's that's where the joke comes from, right, Doug? No, why the BA no die? So what I have to do here is I have to Daruma Cannon flip the field and then send my own SP to the graveyard so that I can actually summon Burning Abyss Mon Monsters. From here, we go to Cherubini and then Zeus to grab Tour Guide from the deck, which he has no real follow up for, thankfully. And we are going to go into game number two. Game two, he starts with King Sarcophagus on the field with a Boots discard as well, filling up his grave with these guys so that he can go for a zombie vampire. Yes, he summons a zombie vampire against Burning Abyss. This, the absolute disrespect is that people don't care about my card effects going off. It's like, who cares if these BA monsters trigger? He mills four and we hit a Skarm, which I'm going to later use to grab a Farfa. And my Farfa is also milled here, which banishes his zombie vampire until the end of the turn. I don't know if he was going to use it for any crazy link plays, but hey, we got rid of his zombie vampire here. It was really funny as well because he, cho he chose to summon my Skarm off of the zombie vampire and that just obviously instantly dies. And then we just had this awkward, like, kind of just stare at each other moment. And then I guess for the first time ever, um, a new player recognized how uh, why the BA die. There's also Enchantress here. That's pretty cool. And it's kind of crazy to me, honestly, that that card is legal in 2024 at six copies and nobody plays it. I mean, remember when this was like a, a staple in every deck two years ago? We draw for turn. We drop a Sphere Mode Baby, sending a bunch of idiots to the graveyard, meaning we can now special sub at two Burning Abyss monsters to go for a Fortune Tune and deal with field using a Zeus. And interestingly enough, keeping the Griffin in defense works wonders for this play. We use the Zeus... And then he chains Imperm, uh, which then obviously we have to chain the Zeus again. And thanks to the Downward Magician, offers that fourth material. Uh, and he has nothing else, just a Cosmic Cyclone. Now at this point, I swear he added a Fog Blade, but I think he must have discarded it for a Horus play at some point. And now we get to punish. Play goes back to him on literally zero cards. Normal summoning Ghost Bell into a Typhon, which is easily taken out by a Dynomicious, discarding Graf, who gets Skarm for the Tour Guide end phase effect, if there even is an end phase, because there isn't. Burning Abyss best deck, baby! 2-0, oh, we just took down Horus. Looking pretty good so far. Fire Lake, I just, I'm just happy I got to pull off the Fire Lake play. That's all that matters. That's all I care about is that I got to do the Fire Lake play. New round, new sus, and we lose the dice roll here and are playing against Runic Earthbound. Yeah, that's the thing I just said. This deck is, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's watch. Uh, he goes for a slumber on Hugin uh, to grab the fountain and normal summons an Earthbound, which gets a spell card, which I guess we'll see if it comes up soon. Synchros for the Garden Rose Maiden, which gets a blank garden, but then just passes on a fountain. I don't know this deck. It's been a long time since I've read the Earthbound cards, but he passes here and it feels very ominous to me. I feel like I'm just playing against the boneless uh, runic deck at this point. We'll see if the earthbounds actually do anything soon. We draw for turn, and I guess we'll just special summon Graf, and then normal summon Graf, and then we pass on uh, three back row with a card in hand. Now, this play looks really awful, doesn't it? Yeah, it's because it is. It is awful. Uh, but for those of you who are observant and know how Burning Abyss works, you might be being able to read that I have a one-off drawn and set Fire Lake here. So I just pass turn here, and then he begins with a runic tip to search for destruction to probably start picking away at my back row and start getting some nice advantage 
off the fountain. Off my three set cards, he does indeed snipe the Fire Lake. Unlucky, so we're forced to chain it early and just clear the entire board, which, you know, still has a lot of cards in hand. So two back row plus a floaty has no battle phase. Maybe we survive here. We hope it's enough and he passes back to us. I'm not sure what my game plan here should be because, I mean, Black Garden is annoying, but I weirdly, it doesn't feel as oppressive. I summoned Seer here and then I overlay to Dante, which if I'm correct in my attack modulation rulings, my Dante should be at 2000 attack. Once I get his effect off, apologies if this was technically wrong, but I attack the Black Garden token. And then in main phase, we go for the Gravity Controller play, making uh, Beatrice, since Dante has a Seer underneath it. And <laughs> <coughs> Chainlink 1, Seer, target, Dante, Dante, Chainlink 2, target! Troll Despair. Sorry, I had to get that bit in at least once for this vlog. He has four Black Garden tokens, and then I pass grabbing Tour Guide from the Underworld. He summons Gary with a Runic to recycle his fountain back to his hand. Uh, now, we normal summons Ash Blossom, and I have to use my counting skills to try and determine what exactly is he trying to synchro into that I'm afraid of. Well, nothing, apparently, because I let it go through, and then he gets out an Axel Synchron, which I Wind Blast, discarding Rollback for. And Rollback is so freaking good in this deck. And in the end phase, I use the Rollback again and do the Fire Lake play once more, copying... Uh, to destroy Fountain, Jerry, and a token. I normal summon a tour guide. He's chilling with a droll in hand and a little rotting plant token on the field, and that's going to be enough for I concede. We're into game number two here of round two, and this might be probably the single worst duel of uh, my entire locals history. It's really bad. Are you ready? Brace yourselves. Now, he gets to go first and try to set up his combo, which involves Hugin pitching to retrieve Fountain, and then some Earthbound swarming the field and tutoring each other to try and set up a bunch of synchro plays that also seemingly like, kind of coincide quite nicely with Black Garden, which, by the way, Burning Abyss, hello, racist. Now I'm racist! Uh, I, I don't want these stupid tokens, which is apparently fine, because he just uses it immediately anyway, and then keeps going with these Earthbound guys, and uh, just searches stuff and brings out, like, a Resonator, and then puts a Jet Synchron in the grave, and I guess this makes a Dragster, which is spell Trap Negate, I, I guess, and then he passes turn? I don't know what just happened, I, I guess that's the strongest Earthbound Immortal board, uh, you'll have to, you, you, you can't convince me otherwise. Anyway, Locals is Locals, we draw for turn, and it's my boy, <laughs> the MVP. We drop the Sphere mode, and then go for the battle phase and evenly matched. You're probably thinking, why would you even bother evenling here? Because you're going to lose your own ball anyway. Isn't that overkill? It's just a one for one. Uh, but the thing is, in theory, the evenly match wasn't going to be live anyway for the rest of this duel. Um, so I might as well use uh, now to get rid of the ball because at the eventually the ball is going to shift control back to my side of the field. And we've already went over how racist Burning Abyss monsters are. I'm even more racist now. We pass on two cards and our opponent gets to go Fountain, and sorry the camera is slightly out of shot here, but there is a Fountain up here which I then use Dynomicious to banish and then discard Rollback for. He normal summons Jet Synchron, which I think makes a Baron with Slapnir or whatever his name is, and then that forces out my Ice Dragon for Machines, uh, which is live because of his Dragster. Now, Pat Play goes back to me and I draw for turn and I have no play except even Leeing again. Why even leave for only one here? Well, next turn he has his Battle Phase and I'm at risk of dying, so I figured I would just fire it off now to potentially try and live regardless. He draws for turn, and then does attack, but then just passes. I draw for turn, evenly again, and then pass. Now, you might be wondering about the rollback discard, because evenly and rollback is an absurd interaction. What you can do is basically, if evenly is in the graveyard, you have no cards in field, rollback copy evenly, you can evenly for zero, which is an entire field banish face down. His destruction pops my back row here and then passes turn, where I just set and pass. He goes to his turn here and attacks, which is technically illegal, but we don't talk about that. He uses tip to get a freezing curses, sets and passes. I draw, set a monster, and pass. He passes. I pass. Wow, this is a crazy duel, isn't it? <laughs> he attacks into a set card, which is Farfa on 1900 defense, and then he sets to and passes. Then I draw, and then I pass. Oh my god, this is painful. I did tell you this was the worst duel in history. He goes Smiting Storm, and I don't know if Deck Out is now the goal or something, but then uses Slapnir to get Gary to recycle the fountain, and or so he thinks, because his fountain is actually face down from Evenly Match, not in his graveyard. So he has to just pass, and then I draw, and finally I can normal summon Tour Guide from the Underworld. My Farfa instantly dies, targeting his monster. He chains Freezing Curses to negate my Tour Guide, which I then chain Torrential Tribute to force through my Tour Guide. The chain resolves, and I get Graph onto the field, and I attack, set, and pass. He tips, gets Flashing Fire, summons out Hugin, which discards his last card in hand for a Fountain, which seems desperate with no Runics, that he basically has to top deck now, and then passes. I attack, set one, and pass. 
He top decks Freezing Curses to negate my Graph in order to trigger Fountain, which is kind of funny because this doesn't work because it was already negated by Tour Guide. So he's forced to just summon Jerry here. At least I think that's how that works. Fountain tries to draw three, but we have Dynamicious in hand, discarding a second rollback. My last card is an Ice Dragon Prison, which I use to summon his level uh, three, destroying my Graph, which I just forgot was negated. A lot of time has passed. I know it seems like it was moments ago, but like minutes have passed by at this point and I forgot my graph was like negated at this stage. So it destroys itself and Skarm goes for tour guide. And in hindsight, it wouldn't have really mattered anyway because I stole his level three. So I was always going to go for a Cherubity play regardless. It just means I guess I get one more body with tour guide. It was a very, very long duel with a lot of stupid things happening. Apologies. We go for the Cherubini plus Dante play, and we have to go for Rollback, banishing both Garys with Ice Dragon and Grave, and then make a Zeus with four materials while he's on zero cards. He top decks Slumber for turn, which gets Hugin, but that doesn't do anything, and finally, finally, we managed to drag this one out into a slow freaking win, dude. Holy 2-0 with Burning Abyss. I hated every moment of playing that game, watching it, and writing it. I hope you did as well. Round three, we're playing against Manadium. We don't play any hand traps. We lost the dice roll, and he's opened Calarium plus Obsession, which is full combo. Do you think we can win this one? You wouldn't doubt the power of Burning Abyss here, would you? After a flurry of plays, time is an illusion. Our opponent ends on a spider. This spider, Griffin. Mascarena. Apollosa for three. Baron. The floor. And two set cards, one of which is a searched Omni Negate reframing. Challenge accepted. We normal summon Tour Guide from the Underworld, which he uses Imperm here, and that's interesting. I think he's trying to play around Thruster Talents, right? Makes sense, I suppose. But the problem is that we get to keep the body with Tour Guide, which means we can rank up into Typhon to force something out here, which we do, and we get hit with Mascarena uh, into an SP at the end of the uh, main phase. I figured trying to attack first would be better than using the effect. We do the next best play possible, which is a nightmare for every combo player's eyes, and that is set four. He draws for turn and then immediately enters the main phase and tries to blind snipe a backer with Bar on the floor, which is my fiend griefing, and it's quite nice here because we can use it to target Starfrost, denying Astral Out access, but he actually decides to negate with Baron here. I don't know why, but that doesn't seem right, so I got nothing else to chain here. I let him keep playing, which is normal summon Reichhardt, and we get to flip Torrential Tribute. That's going to easily force out the Refraining, which is the final Omni Negate we care about. He enters the battle phase here, and in the start step, I activate Daruma Cannon. He chains SP to banish itself and Baron to protect, but then I chain Dynomicious to banish the Baron. Now, the way this resolves is that in order to banish the monsters with SP, he has to banish uh, both targets. So because my Dynomicious resolves first banishing the Baron, the SP just stays on the field, but then further down the chain, get sent to the graveyard because of the resolution of Daruma Cannon since it can't be set as it's a Link monster. And so it leaves the field alongside Apollosa, leaving him with nothing but a set Reichhardt. He passes turn, and then we end phase use rollback that we discarded off of the Dynomicious, targeting the Fiend Griefing, spinning back Starfrost, and most importantly, sending Skarm to search for Tour Guide from the Underworld. Full Manadium combo, no problem. Burning Abyss, best deck. We draw for turn, play out with a Beatrice IP. I was thinking about Zeus for four, but the Beatrice is nice follow-up for Tour Guide if we can afford it. Uh, he draws for turn, uses reframing to recycle the Meeks. Also has an arrival left over to revive the Reichhardt, which I get to Wing Blast on resolution to stop the Lightheart summon discarding Graph for Kagda, which dumps Fire Lake. And I think you know where that's gonna go. It actually didn't go anywhere because Ice Dragon Prison was better in this scenario, with, which is the one we milled off of Dante. We banish his field. And that is the end of game one, beating Manadium, opening the full, complete, best combo, losing to Burning Abyss. Game number two! Do you think we can do it again? We haven't dropped a game yet. He starts his turn with Fenrir and Visa Samsara. Hand traps aren't real, and time isn't real either. He ends on Fenrir, Apollosa, Mascarena, the Spider, and Baron the Floor. Now I have to do a really big hard think here. Let me know in the comment section if you think that this turn was played out incorrectly, but I summon Sphere Mode, which is going to be tributing a Baron, IP, and the Dispater proceeding to set three cards. Apollosa is a given. We don't ever care about Apollosa. Most of the gates are useless against trap cards, so I think it was always correct to leave that one out, but maybe there was a world where we left out the Dispater on the field? Well, let's see. He draws for turn and goes Reichhobia for Reichhardt. Just goes enter the battle phase. 
This time not normal summoning because of Torrential Tribute. He swings and I let it all go through for main phase 2 where he does indeed normal summon, but no Torrential Tribute from me this time. He links into Lightheart and then goes SP to banish a card in the field, which is my Wing Blast that I chain to discard Skarm targeting Apollosa. Nice link for 3 negate monster, losing to a GOAT format 2004 staple, am I right? In the end phase, we go Ice Dragon Prison, targeting Starfrost, which he chains SP to, which I then chain Daruma Cannon to, setting his last remaining monster, and sending SP to the graveyard, searching Tour Guide from the Underworld. You see where this is going again? We go for the Dante play and mill Farf on the process, which I decide to use to banish the Starfrost, giving me the ability to actually summon this year to my field without self-toastering itself. We go to the battle phase and clean up Fenrir, or so we think. The Reich Phobia has a really random negative 1000 attack reduction effect. Did anyone remember that? Well, Jordan observing our game here did remember it. So this is actually going to be a major misplay here, and it's actually gonna become a bit of a situation here, which is why I was asking earlier about the sphere mode, because maybe getting rid of Fenrir was more important. Burning Abyss versus one single Fenrir, challenge impossible. In hindsight, the play was make Dante, eat some damage, and then downward Zeus. But clearing Fenrir without having my life destroyed is a genuine problem for this deck. We find a way to get there, kind of. It's SP plus Beatrice, passing on a Starfrost and back row. We outed the Fenrir, right? Problem solved, just about. That's the last kind of reliable removal I have that isn't trap cards in my extra deck. He draws for a turn and he summons another Fenrir. All right, okay, okay, we just gotta calm down here. It's just a Fenrir. It's only the most broken generic monster ever printed in the history of this game. I will die on this hill. He uses the field spell to pop his own Starfrost, and I can't let that happen because I don't want it in the graveyard for Astraloud access. I chain the SP on my Starfrost and his Fenrir, banishing them until the end of the turn. He activates a rival to bring back Scare Cash, and at the start step, go oh, my new favorite word, uh, we use Beatrice to send a rollback and copy Dino Micious, which still discards for effect, by the way. Like, that actually was relevant here because we get to put the Seer into the grave to trigger off the Beatrice material addition to revive back the Dante on his turn. I find Fumble around in the dark like a donkey here for a bit, and I decide to go for what I think uh, was a thing that actually worked. Okay, look, look, look. The correct play in hindsight here is supposed to be summon access. Don't use the gain effect, because otherwise Fenrir banishes on resolution. Then I use the effect uh, to pop the Fenrir. That way there is never an opportunity for him to get rid of any of my monsters. But it never occurred to me to summon access code without using the effect. So instead we, um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> It's all gonna make sense, trust me. We go battle phase and then kiss the Fenrir's ass with Beatrice. The attack reduction by 100 is actually so ridiculous here. Uh, but this meets the summoning condition of Zeus. Now I try and I sphere mode by tributing his his Fenrir and 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 two of my monsters. I I, I thought you could mix and match. I thought you I thought it was like a pick up. I, th I thought you could I don't I, I just I thought you could do that. Because you could summon sphere mode to your side of the field. So I thought you could just tribute one of their guys and then put it on your side, right? Like I I just I thought that's how it worked. Well, I pass on Zeus, and then, yeah, he draws for turret and immediately goes into the battle phase to swing over SP, not using the effect, otherwise I could just chain the SP. Uh, we get the secret Zeus effect, which is an attach from the deck, which is kind of cool. He summons Typhon in main phase 2 that bounces away my Zeus and triggers Graph of Tour Guide. I summon Tour Guide to get hit with a Veiler, and so I decide to TT my own field. Uh, yeah, well, we don't play Unicorn anymore, we don't have access to Dante or Cherubini, and this is just kind of a disaster. I figured I'd just play trap control from this point with uh, Graf in the field because I don't have anything in my extra deck that can out big monsters at this stage. I have to just use crappy trap cards. He normal summons Rhymeheart, some stuff happens, but then time is called and I've taken so much damage from crashing and uh, stuff like that and I just lose in time and we end up drawing. That was really disappointing. I just, I'm pretty sure I had that in the bag if I just went for that access code play, but it is what it is. Still undefeated technically. Let's see if we can end out the day um, on an X01 record. Round four, we got the gravity controller play, which I should probably explain, because maybe some people don't remember, don't know how Burning Abyss works. The easiest way to get Beatrice in this deck is opening three BA names, but that's kind of minus to summon Beatrice like this. And I know most of you probably think she's just a generic rank six foolish burial, but in Burning Abyss, you actually summon her by discarding a Burning Abyss monster, kind of like a rank up spell. So typically, linking off Dante with Seer as material is always the best access. Now, if you open Graph, you get Mascarena into SP, but if you only open Seer as your normal summon, then you just get gravity controller Beatrice instead of the SP play as well. Link ones were a mistake. Here we end on the Beatrice controller, set a card, and our opponent sets a monster, 
and then proceeds to activate super polymerization, fusing away Beatrice and the set Albaz to make a Mirror Jade. Dante adds back Seer as a material, I guess, but then he actually uses Call by the Grave. And then next, he fusion deploys for Cartesia. That just kind of vibes. He goes battle phase. Start set by Daruma Cannon, mostly just to try and deal with Cartesia since it's main phase only. He chains the Mirror Jade and banishes Gravity Control to set up an Albion in the graveyard. He uses the other Albion and then sends a Retribution to the grave and then just sets a card and passes to also set a Branded in red. Now in the end phase, I roll back copy Ice Dragon to steal his Albaz to my side of the field in hope of turning off all of the stupid Branded cards. You know, because they have like uh, like 47 cards that say uh, requires Fallen of Albaz on them. So, um, you know, I guess if I just take him out of the graveyard, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably be fine. We draw for turn and normal summon back Jack. Uh, we make an Anima, stacking our deck here and then link into SP, uh, which is important because Anima provides the extra deck material required for SP to actually get the banish effect off. Nothing really interesting happens. I kind of just slow bleed into a loss with an end phase super poly on his part, and then we just go to game two. That was really disappointing. Yeah, I don't know. That, that card is crazy. In this duel, I pull off one of the most disgusting plays <laughs> the deck can do. Post side, we bring an anti-spell and end on a bunch of mills. Beatrice on the field, back Jack and Grave, and Fire Lake. You know where this is going to go? We go standby anti-spell. He chains opening to summon Quem, which is kind of going places. Because he can Alibur here to search for Brandon Red, but then just sets four card and passes turn. Now, in the end phase, we activate Dinomiscus, discarding Rollback... Banishing Alibur and then using Rollback to copy a Fire Lake we send to destroy three set spell cards, one of which was the Brandon Red from that anti spell. Beatrice gets Tour Guide and he scoops it up from here. Anti spell is the only floodgate I can ever get behind, man. God, I love that card. It's so, like, it just has so many cool combos, like, you know, not letting your opponent play spell cards. Yeah, it's freaking based. All right, it's the final duel of the day. Can we win and go undefeated? Technically, with Burning Abyss. He opening discards opening for Quem and then sends Retribution. Alibur gets Branded Lost, which is set up for Branded Fusion. And no Ash Blossom in this list, baby, because he Branded Fusion summons Lebellion, sending fucking Jimjo. Yeah, Jimjo, do you know what he's doing? Yeah, he's summoning Sanctifier Dragon and then adding Mercurior to pass turn. He summons Jimjo to the field, meaning my trap deck no longer works. But honestly, more annoyingly, it's having a non-burning abyss monster on the field that's actually really hurting me here. Seriously, it's not being able to try go for Zeus or any kind of extract monster that's that's genuinely fucking me up right now. It's hilarious because my hand is like four monsters. I don't care about the trap cards. I'm being like doubly destroyed here. I normal summon backjack and then stat my deck, making Anima under the Labellion, which I link away using his Cartesia for an SP to banish the Jimjo, which he chains Mercurier to negate, which I chain to banish SP from the field. Yeah, I, I needed that off the field really badly so I can start summoning some good monsters here. We summon Dante and attack over the Jimjo for 100 and then make a downward Zeus. We set two and pass turn with the SP returning back. All things considered, that wasn't a bad turn for us considering just how awful of a situation that was. We pass on a three material Zeus with traps. Should be enough to not die, right? At this point, my backjack is a random mill because of the Dante, which I had to use to out the Jinjo. So I basically just try and Hail Mary into a good trap card here. We hit Farfa, which does, does, does nothing except banish an Alibur till the end of the turn. He attempts to enter the main phase on the clapback, and I have to Zeus the entire field here. You're probably looking at this thinking, huh? Well, yeah, it doesn't feel good either to do this. He has Branded Lost, which means he can play the entire game and this whole turn pretty much uninhibited and me not being able to respond because of the way that Branded Lost works. My two set cards are double transaction rollback. Yeah, that's why the Jim Joe wasn't actually that big of a problem. My only win condition is to get these rollbacks into the graveyard and then hope that I can survive by copying something good. From here, he goes Branded Fusion into Albion, into Mirror Jade and Cartesia with Saranir for Grand Ganol. I roll back the Daruma to not die and like Mirror Jade banishes Zeus anyway and we just get an SP in the end phase, which on our turn he uses to Banishment, making a Sanctifier and then re-summons the Jimjo again. And just like last time, the problem isn't even the trap restrictions. It's the non-Burning Abyss monster on our field clogging two monsters in our hand that are unsummonable. We try and make the best of a terrible situation by normal summoning Seer, which dies to get Dante, which we rank up into Beatrice by discarding Skarm. I crash the Beatrice and then I summon Gay Dante, which gets me Seer to my hand. Relying on Big Chungus, untargetable Dante was definitely not the play into Super Poly non-targeting Banish dot deck, to be honest with you, but eh well. Uh, on his turn, he normal summons Cartesia, fuses up into Masquerade, and he just goes battle phase. In the start step, I go Dante, discard Farfa, draw Wing Blast. Farfa banishes Mirror Jade for the turn, but that is just hit with a call by the grave. 
I chain SP targeting itself in Mascarena, burning myself in a lot in the process, by the way. Chains Mirror Jade, banishing my Dante in my last ditch effort plays to use the rollback and attempt to destroy the entire field to not die, but the fusions are protected from destruction because of the branded opening in the graveyard. So I guess it was game regardless of what we did there, but maybe if we lived one more turn, maybe the Wind Blast would have done something. I don't know, man. I can't believe we're still playing multiple GOAT format staples in our deck list. I hate this. Branded is such a bad matchup for Burning Abyss. Irrespective of the silly Jim Joe tech, it's a lot of big monsters, some of which are not targetable, and they have banish removal instead of destruction. It, it's, it's a complete and awful counter matchup. I had a lot of fun playing this deck, obviously. It's my baby. And I'll try to keep reiterating on the deck list for the future. I have a very spicy deck idea uh, going forward that involves a uh, rollback that isn't just a labyrinth or a generic trap deck. So uh, Patreon to help me gather the cards that I need to actually bring that into reality. All right, let's focus on the cool stuff here, which is our uh, pack opening and our loot for today. Did we pull something to give us a sort of a commiseration prize? All right, spoils of war time. Let's see what kind of goodies we pulled today. Um, you might notice that it's a little bit rift on the top here. I'm gonna level with you, I'm gonna be honest, this is a rigged uh, pack opening. I just did the pack opening moments ago, and I forgot to hit record. So we're gonna do it again! And uh, you're gonna see my shock and surprisement this time round, uh, and it's gonna be completely real and legitimate. Yes, so I repackaged all of the cards I just pulled for this pack opening. This is the most unhinged thing I've ever done. Anyway, uh, let's begin. Alright, we've got uh, Voiceless Voice, uh, Ashen for Eternity, Flock Together, Corbindale, Nightmare Pain! Wow, that's a su that's... That's the U-Bell Rota. That's crap. I can't believe we pulled this card. I've never seen this before. Definitely didn't see it 60 seconds ago. All right, that's incredible. Uh, I am looking for Poplar. Will we pull that Poplar, huh? Um, oh, look, it's already open. Oh, 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 ASMR opening. All right, we've got a Sorcerer of Sebet. Where's this super? Oh, I put it at the back. Uh, Brave Strix. Damn, this is such a shame. I can't wait to play Raid Raptors. I do have a almost full deck here ready to go soon for the core of the cards. So, uh, yeah, that's a shame. I already have this card. Uh, Could have got it for free, essentially. Unfolding pack open. Oh, I even put it in Upside Down. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a Yamarashi. Good common card here was the uh, Wing Beast Rota dodge quick play thing here. So that's kind of cool. So let's go to OTSs. We've got... Uh, Supreme King Gate Infinity, Dark Worm, and it's it's not an ulti. I know it's not an ulti. I know it's not an ulti. I, ju I just cheated with this pack opening. It's TG Star Guardian. All right, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you uh, had a great time. And uh, listen, we'll be doing some different things, mixing it up. Uh, I'm actually going to play an eBay ready-to-play deck at some point, which is going to be hilarious. Uh, so I'm going to take that to locals and see how that goes. And I'm going to mix it up every couple of weeks and see what other different experiments we can run with. If you have any suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. Patreon if you want to help contribute and uh, keep this series alive, because it's very expensive to put these TCG vlogs together. And until next time, adios!